this presentation is about uh, wolf builders and uh, Christian uh, nationalism theory and practice uh, by Catherine de Palti and myself. Uh, a few words about Christian nationalism in the US and the special focus of uh, this presentation. It is about the theoretical argument tracing the evolution of, uh, of religious nationalism as Christian nationalism. We are going to explore empirically how this religion, religious nationalism is, is taught and performed in contemporary America. It's, it is presented in social codex and with a specific correlation with the Trump presidency. And uh, finally, through ethnographic fieldwork in South and Eastern Louisiana and media analysis of Patriot Bibles, which teaches that Jesus is their God and Trump is their president. Uh, the, the path of the US politics toward the religion and spiritual, spirituality began with President Dwight Eisenhower in, uh, in the early 50s, uh, when Eisenhower called for a great crusade for freedom, and he turned his inauguration into a religious ceremony. Americans uh, started to be trained to believe that a nation should be a Christian nation because it has always been a Christian nation ever since it be its beginning. The U.S. had also had to be a Christian nation in order to be distinguished from the godless and atheist communist state of the Soviet Union. We were in the after a, in the period after the Second World War, and the Cold War is a, is a, a strong influence in politics in various countries. The U.S. also had to be a Christian nation in order to be constructed with a, a new deal. Contract, con, contrasted, I'm sorry, with the new uh, deal under Franklin Roosevelt administration. This uh, meant a lot of things. Uh, um, uh, among this, uh, the most important uh, is uh, probably that um, the US had to be a, a, a society uh, with uh, not freedom and equality, but freedom under God. Uh, the new religious right remains committed to, to synthesizing selected Christian theological judgment with specific conceptions of how a democracy ought to function. This was an important point for the religious right in the US, driving to a linkage between religious belief and democratic, uh, democratic ideals, and to a belief that religious values are indisputable and demonstrably ind indispensable to the vi vitality of a democratic way of life. Uh, so began a, a connection and a correlation between uh, religious and uh, uh, between religion and democracy, and finally to a conception of Christianity and democracy as entirely compatible, and the conception of citizenship as deriving from piety. Or, as Art Moss puts this, the vision is to rebuild the foundation of the Republic as it was when first founded a Christian Republic. We must return to the faith of our, of our fathers. This uh, is a constant reminder that uh, the US nation was, the US uh, was, uh, was founded and created and built as a Christian nation. So Trump was not, a, a, even though the attention was, a, was drawn on Trump, Trump was not the first to get help to elect president. Before him, Reagan was also supported by Christian conservatives. And the, the 1976 elections of the cultural war uh, uh, as a, it was seen as a way of defense of Western cultures from the threat of non-Western cultures, and especially Islam. So religion has become a central parameter of the construction of national identity in the US. We could say a criterion of who is included and who is not included in the nation. Uh, furthermore, uh, when the religion began to be, be, to be a parameter, it was not religion in general, but religion as Christianity. One has to be a Christian to be included in the American nation and American nationalism. So it was not uh, enough that one believes in, in, in God, in any God. It has to be the, the Christian God. So we, we trace here a transposition the way American identity or being America in, is perceived and conceived, not through embracing fundamental social and political values, but through believing in the God of Christians. 
we, he, we, we see then we trace a fundamental and notable shift in, in the 70s when evangelicals say that religious organizations should try to persuade senators and representatives to enact legislation, legislation they should like to see become, uh, become law. Uh, they see this way uh, to, uh, to try to, to, to start to affect uh, uh, the American politics. It is fitting and proper for religious groups to support candidates and uh, to be active politically to restore mor morality to public life. So we, we trace a transposition from Christianity in general to evangelical protest Protestantism in particular and to its domination in politics. We also see a shift from politics and from doing politics with political terms to morality and doing politics with moral terms and criteria. Uh, as the, uh, this was said by evangelicals themselves, we must function as Christian citizens of the state in what is becoming a war in our country. It is war of ideology, it is a war of ideal, it, it is a war about our way of life who is under a uh, uh, threat and we must protect and defend it. Uh, to more contemporary developments uh, regarding this, uh, this relationship of religion and politics, uh, we see legislative action to institutionalize morality as a matter of official concern and morality as a public issue rather than in strictly private terms. Morality then becomes a public issue, it becomes a point of politics instead of being a private uh, issue, each one of us has to treat by, by himself and for him or herself. This uh, took uh, a specific, for, specific forms, for example, taking action on moral issues necessarily meant taking part in political affairs. Morality was the issue which gave unity to evangelicals and to which they felt they had something special to contribute. And finally, as the boundaries between morality and politics were symbolically deconstructed, evangelicals found it only natural for their moral concerns to acquire a political dimension. This merging of religion and politics has evolved from a, more, uh, from a moral vision about politics into a cultural framework under Christian nationalism. Religion, and especially evangelicals, and nationalism combined to designate who qualifies as a real American. Christian nationalist means white, but also heterosexual, Christian, and patriarchal, or gender tra traditionalist. So, make America great again means an America reaching its greatness through becoming white and Christian and by excluding th those who are not white and Christian or those who are not white uh, or Christian. If we could uh, summarize somehow the concept of Christian nationalism, we could uh, focus on, this, on uh, these special uh, uh, characteristics. It is approached as a cultural framework connected to fears about ethno-racial outsiders, connected and inspired by a mythic vision of the US as a Christian nation ever since its beginning, connected and interrelated with more exclusionary frameworks such as sexism, denial of racial inequality, patriarchy, native, nativism, racism, racism, or perception of Muslims as a cultural threat. Uh, when we come to the Trump case, after the decrease in the association of religion and politics until 2014, we then trace a dynamic comeback by, uh, by 2016 and most notably by 2020, when the devastating support of white evangelicals protestants to Donald Trump. Christian nationalism becomes a strong predictor and influence on intending to vote for Trump, along with xenophobia and Islamophobia. It's not the only predictor and the, not the only influence, but is it, it is a strong predictor among others. In uh, 2016, 81% of white evangelicals voted for Trump. It is a very high percentage. The ideological background for this uh, condition is that the Holy Land is America as evangelicals Protestants imagine it. The enemy is America as it, it exists right now. So we have a movement built on a theology that asserts the Christian right to rule. 
in homes and school across on lads, it's time for Christians to take a stand. This is not a nation established on the principles of Buddha or Hinduism. Our faith is not Islam. What we follow is not the Quran, but the Bible. This is a Christian nation. This is uh, the, words, the words of Roy Moore. So Trump was, uh, in this context, Trump was portray portrayed and promoted as God's chosen as his tool to restore the Christian kingdom in the US and bring, and bring back the Christian values upon which the nation was once, was once founded. It was evangelical's duty to vote for Trump so that both they secure their personal salvation and work to establish the kingdom of God on earth by overcoming the kingdom of Satan. This, uh, this was what the prophecies uh, about Trump declared and, uh, and argued, and uh, it was a, a campaign in order to, to support Trump for president. The US as a nation of white and conservative Christians awaiting its glorious resurre resurrection to arise from its ashes. This, uh, that day would be the day of the Trump election, but it will also be the 6th of January, 2021, with the capital storming, capital storming. The, this was the theoretical framework. Here are my references, and now Kat will uh, talk about how this happens in practice. Thanks, Dimitra, and thanks for letting me join you in your amazing talk. I learn so much every time I talk to you. All right, let me learn how to share my screen. All right, here we go. Awesome. Okay. Oh, I have. Oh, I can't. So, um, as Demetra said, um, also I have a quiet voice, so you might want to turn up your Zoom presentation. That's one of the advantages of this uh, particular format. Uh, so Demetra told us all about the origins and theories of Christian nationalism. Um, Whitehead and Perry, who study it today, um, note that Christian nationalism is an ideology that's linked to ethnocentrism, but it's not reducible to it. It's a flexible set of symbols that's not reducible to either religion or political conservatism. Uh, so I'm an ethnographer, and today in the presentation, I'm going to share some of my field notes and talk a little bit about what can ethnographic studies of the experiences, fine grain interaction, with people who have these beliefs, what can they teach us? So granular studies of Christian nationalism have shown that it's linked to regressive positions on a host of social issues from marriage equality to taxes and guns. Uh, quantitative sociologists and policy often focus on large scale survey data, uh, focus on social identity complexity or symbolic boundary construction. Um, and ethnography can really look at the lived experience and the meaning of how these are felt by people. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and read a little bit from my field notes. My, sorry, hold on a second. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is my trip to the Tea Party's Christmas party in 2019. So what hey, I wear. Sorry, we can see. This is my tip to the Tea Party Christmas party in 2019. I don't have permission to share any video, so I'm just going to read from you from my field notes. Okay. Sure, sure. Uh, so what do you wear to the Tea Party Christmas party? Should I dress like Kellyanne Conway, like a colonial soldier? I put on a pair of skinny jeans and a top, but it's the South. Should I put on a dress? I put on a long polka dot silk dress before settling on a black pencil skirt. Yeah. Apply my meeting his parents makeup, mascara, a rosy lip. I post it to my Instagram story. My friend Craig responds, Bleh. I don't want to go to this. I'd been to white Christmases that have become white nationalist Christmases after my mom had too many eggnogs, but I'd never been to an officially racist party. Can't I just do digital ethnography? I make a deal with myself that I can walk or get a nice cocktail and Uber over to Metairie. It's a white suburb in a red state, very Christmas. So sociologists will describe scaling empathy walls, but nothing about the deep awkwardness of opening up a door when you are 10 minutes late to a thing you don't want to be at. Breathe, smile, and go. The party is in the back room of the kind of place my uncle would call a sit-down restaurant. It's working class fancy. It's an oyster bar that might give me chlamydia. 40 or so people in a dress sense that rages from Nazi Christmas card to Walmart celebrity range are sitting at tables of six to eight. It's all couples except for me. It's easy to make friends. If you're a white woman, that empathy wall already hostile, it's more like a toddler gate. 
just be nice, talk about your kids, perform white girlhood appropriately, smile at older women and beam at their babies, refer to your partner often and in glowing terms, say you're looking at schools and let people link your research to your fertility. It's not that different from legal life, it's just less inconsistent. People wanna connect. You just have to sort of squeeze yourself into the small talk, find a nice way to say things that go on about phonics. That's cool, make a mental field note. Someone says, Bob Jones, don't say integration, don't do it, order a so-called import beer, sip, smile, nod, repeat. By the time I'm finished, I'm invited home to Christmas. She passes me the name of her church on a cocktail napkin with a whisper that it's the real church, Latin with veils. I turn to talk to a woman about homeschooling. She tells me that she homeschools because she wants her children to have the light, which means Christianity, but it also means no black children. Her husband stares at my ass. An old lady who ships her fleece jacket like a fur, underweight old Republicans picket lettuce cups, fat ones stare at skeletons of some kind of bread bowl. They're bedockered old men scrolling through Trump's Twitter with all like it's Moses stone tablets. And then my ethnographic Christmas present arrives. A middle-aged woman in a red onesie, kind of like the one I'm wearing now. And a Santa hat emerges from the crowd at the back. She picks up a mic, puts a cassette in the stereo and begins leading the group in song. To the tune of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, they sing. We Americans had lost our way as actors in this passion play, but the scales had finally fallen from our blind eyes. Said our founders through enlightenment to be free, constrain our government, and now it's time to use what we've been given. The Constitution, the Constitution, the Constitution, the Constitution, I don't sing. We gathered round and we raised our voice. We realized that we had a choice to stop the degradation of our country. When someone comes who sings the song of liberty and screams what's wrong, we all must rise to join the revolution. The revolution, the revolution. After the second reprise, the voices grow louder and more confident. The leader begins to recite the text of the second amendment over the song. It is truly the most violently kitschy performance of Americanness I've ever seen in my life. It's the oral version of an old country buffet wall. It's nauseating and I am thrilled. This is their song of liberty. Do they think the revolution is gonna start with a sing-along at a strip mall in South Louisiana? The elastic waisted separate nations going to battle with the pantsuit nation, they can both have this country. They sing, we Americans have lost our way as actors in this passion play. Is this their Christmas pageant? The passion of the flat tax, the crucifixion of John Adams. But the scales had finally fallen from our blind eyes. Oh God, some lady is trying to make her voice swoop now. Be soulful. In a second, people are gonna be raising their hands in praise that our founders through enlightenment be free, constrain our government. And there it is. They're worshiping the president. It's joyously terrible. I squeeze into my little bit of ethnographic distance so counter to their full-throated patriotism. This is their jam, this loud, corny music. They're owning the libs by wearing a Santa hat. They're fighting the war on Christmas, saluting the flag, loud means proud. They're performing populism. They're ordinary folks. This is no arty farty lid shit. It's badness makes it populist. This from the warming oysters to the funny separates to the sound of the sing-along. This is the appropriate performance of proud Americanists. It's cultural populism for the economic elite. This is its own kind of teaching and learning, a patriotic church, a sermon in nationalism. The Tea Party promotes libertarian as biblical economics. These women celebrate a Christian nation. They homeschool with the Patriots Bible. They sing the constitution like a hymn in order to build a world where we read the Bible like a law. So this field note is from two years of research that I did online and in Southeast Louisiana. Uh, okay, um, this it was my invitation to the Tea Party's Christmas party. Uh, we're all patriots, apparently. Uh, they didn't like me very much, so I'm not surprised. Um, the other places where I looked at the way Christian nationalism happens in practice uh, was through homeschooling and online schools. Uh, so I looked at the Freedom Project Academy, which is an online school that's founded by the John Birch Society, which I was not aware still even existed, but you know, this sort of militantly capitalist, anti-communist conspiratorial uh, organization now has an online school called the Freedom Project Academy that uses um, Christian nationalist homeschooling. And interestingly, it sells Christian schooling as the most individualist schooling. 
So it celebrates canonical texts, canonical literature, um, this idea of Western civilization and culture that's been linked to white supremacist organizations. Uh, and it sells all of this uh, as being about the individual, about individual freedom, of course. Um, and it also really has this idea of sort of militant masculinity, like check out these founders, right? These guys are jacked. These are not like old men who think these are, these are strong, muscular, militant founders. And uh, this reflects some of uh, Perry and Whitehead stuff about Christian nationalism having a much more militant form of Christianity. This is also something that Christian Colbes Dumez mentions in her study of popular constructions of Christianity that it really emphasizes the sort of like macho man vision of, of what is holy. And I think that's weird and fascinating. Uh, these are some educational materials from the Tea Party historian, David Bartons, um, who founded the Wall Builders. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. If you're not, uh, you're lucky, don't be. Uh, these, uh, David Barton has recently come up with a new version of the Founders Bible, uh, where in it, you know, is, is a Bible, but also these texts about the founding of the country that brings together this sort of militant patriotism and, uh, and Christian belief and practice, and it's one of the most popular uh, homeschooling texts, uh, as well as the earlier iteration, the Patriots Bible. Uh, so there's, again, this idea, you know, through this idea of freedom, through this idea of masculinity, uh, brings together sort of Christian Christianity and nationalism. And, okay, that's, I can't see my presenter notes, which is a little bit off. Okay, so the Christian nationalist blends uh, blending of the national and the religious that people have seen um, in the large scale survey data, you know, is practice taught and performed. It's not just a myth, it's not just a dog whistle, but it's also something that has to be done and lived every day because it, it doesn't necessarily make sense to love uh, Trump, but hate your government, to not want to pay taxes, but support the revolution, but, so let, but love the constitution. All of these things have to be sort of held together all the time by these ongoing daily practices that are done oftentimes by homeschooling mothers and people that maybe political scientists don't necessarily pay the same kind of attention to. Uh, the other things that I noticed is that they often use this really dramatic battle language. It's always the revolution. It's never just like some work that they're doing on a Tuesday to improve the community. Um, and this sort of battle language blends religious faith and also blends a kind of white nationalism. So, you know, they're always fighting for the light and the light is this thing that it's the Christian light but also takes on these other meanings of the light as opposed to the dark, the light in education as opposed to the dark in education, which ends up taking on these sort of racialized meanings. Um, they also will use a racialized a religious language to frame racist and nationalist positions, uh, often framing them in terms of conversion. Uh, they also produce all of this as ordinary through material culture and populist cultural tastes. Uh, so patriotism and at times also racism uh, come to stand in for sort of a working class identity because we're not a cultural snob. So uh, my participants would say that we're working class precisely because we're racist, um, which I thought was, well, it was really awkward as a, as a dinner party conversation, but it's quite an interesting finding to be unpacked. And the last thing is the sort of symbolic, affective and material role of libertarianism as a kind of masculinity. So this is really somehow deeply connected to social conservatism is this belief in, in freedom as not paying your taxes as a kind of masculinity. They're all sort of linked together in this like really highly desirable gender goal um, that was really important for my participants and that had this sort of moral weight to it that went beyond uh, just, just being fiscally conservative and was much more aligned with being socially conservative except around guns. And then the last thing that I thought was most fascinating was that Christian nationalism has this idea of a great narrative, that American history is a story told by God in which you, if you are a man, are the hero. And if you're the white woman who is teaching or homeschooling your son, then your son is the hero. So there's this idea in almost all of these Christian nationalist homeschools uh, that the world is a story told by God in which America represents the peak of progress and you as the you know, young American boy are nature's aristocracy and the hero of the story. And so this is probably also one of the reasons why this type of ideology could prove to be so popular and to produce this feeling of closeness to America that Whitehead and Perry talk about as being really important for Christian nationalism. 
All right, that's it. Thanks very much.